Talk a bit more about Valérie Giscard d'Estaing's legacy with me now. I'm joined on the set by France 24's Philip Turrell. Hi, Philip. Uh, Valérie, when he came to power, he wanted people to see him as the French Kennedy. Tell us about that. Well, it, it, I think um, you have to remember that back in 1974, France had just come out of a very difficult period where uh, the previous president, Georges Pompidou, had been seriously ill in and out of hospital and had died while in office. So there was a, a, a thirst generally for a much younger, more dynamic president to take over at that period. And uh, Giscard d'Estaing was an incarnation of everything that France was looking for uh, to try to move the country forward. So he modelled himself as being the youngest president at the time um, uh, in the French Republic. He was only 48 years old uh, when he took office uh, and brought in a whole swathe of different changes uh, at the beginning of his presidency, which were not easy to bring in. The first one, of course, was uh, divorce uh, was acceptable through mutual uh, consentment between uh, a married couple. Before that, you had to wait years to get divorced. There were also uh, changes uh, to uh, the laws concerning abortion, which was then uh, uh, legalised, much to the fury of, of the Catholic Church in France. If you take uh, a high-speed train in France, the TGV, as they're called, uh, they began under a uh, he knew that uh, it was necessary to revolutionise transport in France. He got rid of uh, the, the, the view that Paris should be left to cars. He needed to modernise the buses and the metro. That was also uh, to do with uh, Giscard d'Estaing. And France became a nuclear uh, power country, uh, moving away from uh, coal, uh, which is still used in countries like Germany, and nuclear power became the norm in France. That was also uh, under Giscard d'Estaing. So over the first few years of his presidency, there was this dramatic move towards modernising France, bringing it into the 20th century and making it a whole new country, with, uh, trying to take uh, challenge or take control of the challenges that were facing Europe at the time. Valéry Giscard d'Estaing also had a lot of effect outside of France. He was really instrumental in building the European Union. That is true, too. Uh, if you look at, at the European Council, uh, the meeting of uh, heads of state of the European Union, that was due uh, to Valéry Giscard d'Estaing. Now, he was born in Germany, in Koblenz, which is a part of, of Germany, close to France, which used to be under uh, French control uh, in 1926. Uh, so he had also lived through uh, the Second World War and was keen to make his mark as bringing Germany and France back together. So the Franco-German axis, this great friendship between uh, Helmut Schmidt on the one side and Valéry Giscard d'Estaing on the other side. Uh, that all came about uh, during the presidency of uh, Giscard d'Estaing, uh, building on Europe, trying to promote uh, the creation of what was to become the European Union, uh, bringing together uh, a European monetary system in, in the 1970s. All of that was something that uh, Giscard d'Estaing wanted to work towards. And, and he was also the instigator of uh, the G7, uh, the group of seven most industrialized nations. That was something also that began under uh, the the presidency of Giscard d'Estaing. So Valéry Giscard d'Estaing, a modernizer, working to build Europe, and yet just a one-term president. Why? Well, I think that there were a whole number of different factors that contributed towards this much more uh, stringent uh, economic uh, policy that was introduced in the second half of his uh, uh, mandate, his seven-year mandate. Uh, also, the fact that uh, uh, the unemployment rate was beginning to rise in France at the end of the 1970s, beginning of the 1980s, and general fatigue, I think, with, with French presidents that all French presidents experience. But there were a couple of other uh, issues that uh, I think uh, contributed to his downfall. For one was this, the, the history of the, the story of the Bacassa diamonds, these diamonds that he was allegedly given by uh, Jean Bedel Bacassa, the uh, self styled emperor of the Central African Republic, who was a ruthless dictator. Uh, these diamonds what were never shown, but uh, Giscard uh, did admit that they had been sold afterwards and the money re employed back into the Central African Republic. But that stuck with him during the presidential campaign of 1981. Where were these diamonds? And the second one was during the presidential debate in 1974, uh, he uh, one by insinuating that President Mitterrand was the man of the past, or Francois Mitterrand was the man of the past, and Mitterrand really wanted to get his own back in 1981. So uh, uh, he um, uh, said that uh, uh, that, uh, uh, Mitter uh, that uh, Giscard was uh, not a man to be elected for a new mandate, and uh, I think that the opinions had swung then towards Francois Mitterrand on a new change of France, and that was why uh, he lost the election. Thank you so much for that, Philip. A France 24's Philip Turrell. Well, today 